testimonies of his goodness. Amen. Are you a testimony? Are you a living testimony? Come on, let's worship. You guys know this song. Let's sing with us. Come on, I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I am 
faithful And I will sing Of the goodness of God Oh, let's see that again In all my life In all my life You have been faithful In all my life all my life You have been so, so And I will sing of your goodness, oh God. Come on, hallelujah, we worship you. For your goodness, your goodness is running after, is running after me. Your goodness is running after, is running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, is running after me. Your goodness, your goodness is running after, is running after me. This is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Come on. In all my life, you have been faithful. In all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am made And I will sing of the goodness of God Hallelujah Come on, worship Him and that's a promise you can stand on. He's good. Come on, the world needs to know. Amen. Come on. We'll sing of your mercy. We'll sing of your love. Your love. Your love. We'll sing of your goodness and we'll sing of your goodness and we'll sing of your mercy and your love and your love we'll sing of your goodness and we'll sing of your goodness and we'll sing of your mercy and your love or I will build my life and I will Upon your love is a firm foundation, and I will put my trust in you alone. And I will come on, sing that again. Come on, I will, and I will.
Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Come on, just worship him. Just take a moment just to lift your hands. He's here, he's here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, worship him. We thank you, Jesus. Every song we could ever sing, and worthy of all the praise we could ever bring, and worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. We live for you, Jesus. Jesus, the name above every other name. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus, the only one who could ever say. And worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. We live for you. Will shout 
like him. If you love him today, give him a praise. If you worship him today, lift your voice in this room. Lord, we acknowledge that you are great and you're greatly to be praised. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I'm glad to be back with you. I was away last week and tomorrow, in fact, I'll be flying to Oklahoma City. That's good, huh? Oklahoma City is nice. Yeah. I'm going there for a Church of God uh, meeting. I'll be there for much of the week, but I will be back um, Sunday. This time, I'll only go during the week and then be back. But I heard and I saw on live stream that you were in good hands. Good hands. Capable hands. Anointed hands. Blessed hands. And that gives me freedom not to have to worry. I love, respect, and trust the Barlows. Yeah, everybody needs a circle of trust that's tight. And this one is tight and is right. I know it's right. We spent many hours together. And I also heard about the women getting together in the upper room. And it was as the day of Pentecost a mighty rushing wind came in that room. And we're grateful to God for his presence and him showing up and for the strength of the ladies in the house, the women, the women of God. And on Friday, the men gathered in the narthex and in this room. Men, would you stand up just for a minute? This is not, this is not to, because we want to have a boys club. Gerald, why are you not standing? That's all right, you weren't here, you're a man. I want all men to stand up. Young men, all, and there's a purpose for this. This is not because we're a club, it's not because we're exclusive, it's because we're a fellowship. And we stand as priests, prophets, and kings. And things in our community, in our schools, in our churches, in our neighborhoods, in the nation will get better when men stand up. See, that's the power of presence. That's the power of presence. 
I'm not, I didn't ask the sisters to stand up because they always show up. They always show up. It's true. We talk, you know what we talked about. We're, we're going to keep that intimate between us. But that was just the beginning. I want to say uh, Pastor O, myself, and Deacon Blackstock have been talking. And we're already talking about the next step and the next phase. And we're going to communicate with you. We want to hear from you. But we're not going to be hearers only. We're going to be doers. At New Covenant, we're done with passive ministry. That's why we're going out. We, we are, heaven is activating us because there's work to be done to declare this generation. So you will hear more about the next steps. Ladies, would you give a hand for these men who are standing? It feels better when men stand up. It's safety when men stand up. The atmosphere changes when men show up. You may be seated, brothers. You'll hear more. God is doing something in the midst of us. And so we respond with obedience. A couple things and I'll take my seat. First, if you are here or if you're on the live stream, and you have the gift of administration, the gift of administration, and you wanna sow that into the kingdom. We need help organizing and administrating for the pastoral, members of the pastoral team and the pastoral council. I'll ask you to email Gabrielle Hertzmart at gabrielle at newcovenantchurch.org if you have the gift of administration and you want to sow that into the kingdom, we're stirring up gifts. God is mobilizing us and he builds his church, but we're doing an apostolic work. When Paul said, I'm a wise master builder, he talked about the foundation, but apostles, apostolic work is not to build the church, it's to build the people. So we build up the body of Christ. We are building up the body of Christ. And in order to do that right, we need infrastructure so that we're not all over the place. I told you, we're no longer gonna be Martha. We're Mary, we're gonna be focused. And next week, I'm gonna talk to you about something that I already talked to the staff about. The three things that our ministry will focus on with all our heart, with all our mind, all our soul and our strength so that we're all aligned and every activity will line up with that or it won't happen. But it has to be clear what it is and I promise you none of it, none of it is engineered by me or anyone in the flesh. It will all line up with the word of God. If it doesn't, don't do it. If it does, do it because it is God who's working in us, both to will and to do according to his good pleasure. And in that spirit, we are, next week is the gathering. Is anybody excited about the gathering? Has anybody been going out? Yes, yes. So there are cards that the ushers have for the gathering. We wanna make it easy for you to give them to your neighbors, your friends, your loved ones, your enemies, especially your enemies because your enemies will become your friend when they come into the kingdom. You wanna get rid of your enemies, get them saved. And there have been people canvassing the area and people canvassing the area and praying. And I'm excited to see that people are going before us and they're praying. The soil is getting ready for harvest. People are praying into it. They're going to businesses. They're going around the community. They're going in the projects. They're witnessing. They're speaking the life that is to come. 
So next week, I'll be in East Falls. We're, our, our service will be powerful, but not as long, so that we have energy to be in East Falls at 3 p.m. next week for the gathering. The cards are with the ushers. Um, also, I've been given this to remind you of Holy Week. Y'all know it's Easter, right? <laughs> Y'all know Easter's coming? A lot of people, that's the only day on the calendar that they come to church, but you're not those people. But uh, Palm Sunday is April 2nd. Yes, everybody saying yes? You know that? I'm, try, I'm trying to figure out what this is for. I'm sorry. But Easter is coming. And so it's the night. It's the next week. Yes. <laughs> See that? I don't even have to say it. You know that it's coming. This caught me off guard. So I don't want to. Easter's coming. Easter's coming. Somebody say it with me so I know that you've got it. And then we're going to have a good Friday service on April 7th. And then on the 9th, as said, resurrection. That's the order. But there's something else I want to do while I'm here uh, before I take my seat. Our, our aim is to have multi-generational integration isn't the word, but harmony and fellowship. You've heard it said, nobody left behind. And we're trying to organize ourselves in such a way that that is so, not just because we say it. What we say matters less than what we do and what you experience. We want everyone to know that you matter. The children have a voice. The young adults, everybody, families matter. Singles matter. Seniors, we want to strengthen. All of that, we want to uh, come together. And as you know, we just have the emergence of a family life ministry. And Brenda Rice, I see you. I'm gonna call you to talk about the seniors. It's been on my heart. I've been meaning to call you. I've been running around. But now that I see you, I promise you, within the next 24, 48 hours, I will call you. But God, it's the will of God that no one is left behind. Some of us are strong enough that we can go out Others are strong enough spiritually that they can pray. And when you pray, there's no time or space that can hold it. You can go places. You can go to Ghana right now in prayer, sitting right here. My brother from another mother is a witness. You can go to Kenya right now, right where you're sitting. You can go to South America. There is nothing, no time or space can hold the prayers that go from earth to heaven because the God that we pray to has the whole world in his hand. He's got the whole world in his hand. So what I'm saying is we strengthen those. And just as David decreed in Israel, those who mind the stuff are like those who go and get the spoils. That's the way it's going to be in New Covenant. And so I want to introduce someone who's very special. Um, will be a member of the leadership team of Family Life. As the search committee was looking, they talked to me about a young lady who, when I saw her resume, there was something about her, and I mentioned it to the committee. I'd never met her. And then I met her. And I promise you, this is a young lady whose time has arrived. She's young, but she's wise beyond her years. And I'm grateful to God that all the time we've been praying, we've been praying for, for a generation to rise up and God sends someone here like her. I want you to meet her today, Brandy Ray. And she will be a part, come on, New Covenant, do you know how to make people feel welcome? Can you make her know that she made the right choice? Yeah. 
she will be a part of the leadership team for family life and in her life, in her ministry, in her work, she's focused on young women. She's done it with nonprofits and developed them. So I believe that there will be young women who will be spiritually developed. It's not limited to that, but it's one of the things that I see that she'll be able to do. I talked about every generation. We're, the men, we're talking. The women are getting together. The young people are getting together upstairs. Now, we don't want any segment, every generation, all five generations will be touched, will be strengthened, will be activated in New Covenant Church. And so God is sending workers. We prayed to the Lord of the harvest to send laborers. And here's one. Brandy, I want you to say a few words so they know how you sound. Good morning. Good morning. It is a new experience to be here, but I am blessed to be here with you all this morning. I am also coming here with my mother, Karen Wise. Stand up, mother. <laughs> mother, would you stand up? Mom. <laughs> so that everybody knows that you're wise. <laughs> Yes, but I spent 29 years at Triumph Baptist Church of Philadelphia, and they have blessed me to come here at New Covenant, and I am thankful for that. I am thankful for the hiring committee as well as Pastor Oliver for allowing me this opportunity. So I look forward to meeting you all. All right, come on, encourage her as she goes to her seat. She's in the right place at the right time. God is doing something in New Covenant that half has not been told. And so with that, I will decrease and the pastors of this hour will increase. Come on, let's receive them. Amen. Good morning, New Covenant. Good morning. Come on, good morning, New Covenant. Good morning. It is a good morning. Is, is his mercy new every morning? Every morning. His mercy is new every morning. Sister Brandy, we want to welcome you to New Covenant Church. Can we welcome Sister Brandy again? Welcome. We're, we are excited to get started with you. There is a lot uh, going on at our church, a lot of good things that are going on, and we are excited uh, that you will be part of the leadership team to help us transition to new territory, break down new boundaries, and hit new borders. And so say your prayers, read your word, because great things are on the horizon. Amen? Amen. Before we get started, I, we're going to bring up um, the nicest person <laughs> in the world. The <laughs> nicest person in the world. This person will go to bat for you for absolutely anything that you need. All you need to do is give him a call, text him, email him. He loves Mount Airy. He loves Germantown. He loves the city of Philadelphia, has served the city. He has great parents, and he is actually our cousin, and he happens to be uh, running for mayor of the city of Philadelphia. Derek Green, can you give it up for Derek Green? He's just gonna come up and give some few uh, remarks. Here you go, Derek. Okay. First, I gotta give honor to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, from whom all blessings flow. It's a pleasure to be here on this morning, uh, New Covenant. I bring you greetings on behalf of my pastor, the Reverend Dr. Derek Brennan. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. I have to say a shout out to the Granham th family, to your senior pastor, to my cousins, uh, Omar and Janine Barlow, who are such a strong, strong, strong embodiment of not just Christian love, but familial love and they do it every single day and every single step. So let's give them a hand. 
This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad and well in it. So my name is Derek Green. I'm running for mayor of the city of Philadelphia. I've been blessed to warn a lot of different hats in my life. That's why I don't have as much hair as I used to. I've been a member of city council for two terms, a small business owner, small business lender. I've also taught in the school district when I was in law school. But one of the things that make me the most uniquely qualified to be the 100th mayor of the city of Philadelphia is I was an assistant district attorney. And when I was an assistant district attorney, I was once racially profiled while leaving the DA's office. So we know we have some real issues in the city of Philadelphia. Last year, we had 2,200 shootings. 74% of the victims and shooters look just like me. Now, based on my experiences, I know we have to reduce the gun violence in the city of Philadelphia, but we cannot violate the rights of our citizens. Someone that wants to victimize a person that looks like my 83-year-old mother must be held accountable. But we cannot criminalize, over-criminalize our criminal justice system with young black men that look like my 22-year-old son on the autism spectrum. So in the first year of a green administration, we'll have 25% or more reduction in shootings in the city of Philadelphia. And we'll do that through presence, accountability, opportunity, and investment. And your senior pastor, when you said presence of men, that's the type of presence we need in the city of Philadelphia, presence of police officers. We know we don't see police officers like we used to. We need to bring police officers into the city of Philadelphia that reflect our city. So we're gonna to go to our local colleges and universities, go to our historically black colleges and universities like Delaware State and Lincoln and Cheney and bring police officers back into our city that understand and help to rebuild the trust in our city. Accountability. When I was in the district attorney's office, we had a real partnership with the U.S. Attorney's Office to go after illegal guns because we have to do that and hold people accountable who are doing the violence in our city because we know we need to make our city safer going forward. So that's presence and accountability. But we also need to have opportunity investment. And if you're a young person that got caught up in the criminal justice system, we have to give you a pathway out to get a family sustaining job. You know, I remember growing up, my aunt and uncle lived on 2009 North Ontario Street, not far from the Bud Plant. And you remember the Bud Plant on Hunting Park Avenue? 20,000 jobs were there helping people in Nicetown and Tioga and all over that part of the city. I was driving up Hunting Park Avenue over the summer and I saw signs called Bud Bioworks and that they're actually transitioning and transforming that location. So now that someone's great grandson can work in the same place with their great grandfather and start a job and build a home and start a career. Those are the family sustaining jobs we gotta bring back to the city of Philadelphia. And the last piece is investment. Now, my mother taught at Arnie High School. Arnie used to have one of the best auto body shops in the city. If you came out of Arnie High School, you go right down on Broad Street to Wilkie and get a job. But we took those jobs out of our schools. So we've got to invest in our schools to give people an opportunity to see what they can be and be a leader. So those are the things we need to bring into our city of Philadelphia. That's how we're gonna make the city much safer, through presence, accountability, opportunity, and investment. And I'll close with this. When I made my announcement, and I did my announcement at a small business, I'm visiting small businesses every single day, and I went to a small business in West Philadelphia. Mike Carroll owns the ESPM Hair Zone, and he's really made that small business a true anchor for his community. Not only has he made it an anchor, he's also addressing public safety issues in that barbershop in his community. He brings in the victims and shooters, locks the door, and helps him to resolve issues. Because we've got to get young black men to believe they can put down a gun and pick up a paycheck. Because we know we've got to get that done. That's the leadership that we need in our city. So when I announced my campaign, I said Philadelphians should expect more and deserve better from our city. We should. We should get more than what we're getting from our city. And I know we're going through a very challenging time. We're going through what many would say a valley of dry bones. But I have faith, just like we all have faith in our risen Savior, I have faith that we can get through these issues, but it takes leadership. 
and takes an opportunity to understand these issues and bring some hope back to the city of Philadelphia, because that is what we are missing, and that's what we need. So I thank you for allowing me to say and express with you a few words about my campaign. I'm working hard every single day because I believe Philadelphians should expect more and deserve better from our city. Derek Green for mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Derek. Thank you, man. I'm not going to say a lot because I could say a lot because this is my first cousin. And I have literally known him my entire life. Actually, he's known me my entire life because I'm the youngest, right? But uh, Derek is a man of integrity. And I will tell you that one of the greatest compliments that people have ever given my husband or me is that what you see is what you get. What you see Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday is what you see when we stand up here. I can offer that same to my cousin. What you see is what you get. And so when you get to make your decision, consider Derek, mayor, Derek Green for mayor. Hallelujah. Thank you, Derek. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Pastor Bob, again, for giving us this <clears throat> opportunity to share. We love you uh, dearly. And we said that uh, we have committed that we're going all the way uh, to see what God can do. And we owe it. Yes, yes. We owe it. All of us. We owe it to God. We owe it to God to see what he can do with our lives. I'm going to say that to you again. We owe it to God to see what he can do with our lives. I'm going to say it to this side. We owe it to God to see what he can do with our lives. Our lives. And that is why as soon as you make a decision to follow God with your life, Pastor Bob. He disrupts your regularly scheduled program. <laughs> he disrupts all that you had planned. All he of dis it. Go ahead. All of it. All of it. Literally all of it. everything that you had planned, and he brings you into this space of son, daughter. You might not know totally where you're going, but you can't stay here. Mm -hmm. I want to say that to you again. You might not know totally where you're going. You might not even know what you're doing. But you cannot stay in this place right here. Pastor Bob, at the end of, the, at the end of 2022, he said, I'm telling you all like I've never heard God before. He said one word, go. Just go. And as you start to go, stuff will fall off your life. As you start to go, the things that you worry about, the things that make you anxious, yeah. things that you're unsure about, all of that starts to fall off your life. I watched a young man yesterday. We were in Abbotsford home. I watched him. And I watched him. Janine said, let's, 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 we set up. We're in the middle or at a little pavilion. We're in the middle, middle of Abbotsford Homes. And this lady comes out. And she said, what y'all doing here? We we'll looked, call her Miss Sarah. Yeah, we'll call her Miss Sarah. So Miss Sarah comes out, stood on her porch, had her arms folded. And she said, did y'all get permission to be here? Now remember, watch this. Matthew 28 says you already have permission. <laughs> Y'all ain't hearing me. Y'all ain't hearing me. Y'all ain't hearing me. Matthew 28 says, we go. You already been released by heaven to go. Now I'm going to tell you what happened to Miss Sarah in a minute. 
<laughs> so it was kind of, we were in this, we, we felt like a weird space for, for a moment. And so when you, when you do what God says to do, you'll feel like you're in a weird space. It'll feel uncomfortable because you're not used to it. You're, you're comfortable coming in here. I'm, I'm going to go to church, sit down in my regular seat, and I'm expecting to hear the word. I'm going to go home, get some chicken, get some greens, and go to bed, watch the Eagles. <laughs> you, you, you got a program, right? Come on, somebody talk to me. So you got a program. I'm comfortable. But once he says go, he puts you in a weird space where you don't know, Janine, what you might see. Go ahead. So in addition to having permission, because we know that the, the, the heavens are mine, God said, but the earth have yes, I given to yes, the children yes, of men. Yes. In addition to having permission, because of the strategy that God gave us and all the volunteers that signed up, God bless you for your diligence and your excitement. I was able to say to Miss Sarah, we're calling her so she can remain anonymous, uh, Miss Sarah, I was able to say, well, you know, Miss Lola and Sister Maydeen have uh, been to the site and, and have actually gotten permission because mm. part of the strategy mm. was that they were praying all for, for weeks for yes. this space. The intercessors have been praying. Yep. Sister Lola and the rest of the canvassing team, uh, Sister Brandy and, and Sister Stephanie Ricky. and Brother Ricky, they had already been out in the whole <laughs> neighborhood, the shop right, the Abbotsford Homes, Ridge the Avenue. Ridge Avenue, the farmer's market area where the uh, station used to be, the little restaurant used to be. And so I was able to say to her, oh yeah, we have permission and we've asked the, the community and I was able to say everything off, uh, off your little text message to me about what you did. And I just want to share that to say mm. that didn't just happen, yeah. right? We've been praying for a strategy since, since Pastor Bob. gave us the assignment. Yeah. And part of the strategy was all of those sections that you see on the, sh the form when you go to volunteer, somebody told us we don't talk to this side enough. I'm going to yeah. come on over here. <laughs> we, got, we got a couple calls, too. We got too. In trouble, y'all. They said, talk to me, Barlow. Yeah, they said, we don't talk to you, Mel. I got to do better. <laughs> so I love New Covenant. <laughs> we got pre some calls. Y'all preaching all right, but you notice that you don't talk over here enough. I say, we're going to fix that right away. And so... We were able to get the strategy because we prayed. And so even as God gives you the strategy, you're going to have to follow his plan. You're going to have to pray. You're going to have to fast. You're going to have to tell yourself, even when you think you know that you don't know, so that you can hear how he wants you to do it. How do you want me to go, God, yeah. is the question. And so, and so those strategies, don't lose your thought, no, no, honey. Those strategies that we had, those lists that you see, that wasn't just list of people put up there and, hey, we need some people to do some things. Yeah. So what God said is you have all these people, over 50 of you volunteered. Now yes. it's probably over 70. He said, go first to the intercessors. Yep. Go next to those who will canvas the area. Go next to those who want to be at prayer stations to go out to each of those areas. Because we followed the strategy, we were able to tell Sister Sarah, who was like, who are y'all? Where did you come from? Do you have permission? Yes, we have permission, Miss Sarah. And so when we, when we got there, we set up the table. Big prayer station sign <laughs> in the middle of just setting that up as a witness but set up this big prayer station it's red the letters are white got a big white table we pulling out um books uh books bibles hot chocolate so yeah. all that's happening on this red table and nobody's out there but this lady <laughs> Like this, just looking. She said, I'm good. I'll be over there in a minute. She was just, you just checking us out. Then she told me, I'm going to go in the house for a minute because it's cold, but I'm going to be watching y'all. And so, oh yeah. And so Janine says to me and my brother, she said, let's walk around a little bit. So remember, we in the remember we in a different space. And and she said, and she kept saying, "It's dangerous it's around dangerous. here. It's dangerous. It's dangerous." Now remember what we preached last week. Mm -hmm. When you show up, he'll be there. Mm -hmm. And remember what we preached last week. 
See, that's why it's, that's why it's so important to close the gap with action. Yes. Because you can, you never really internalize it until you do it. So we know a lot, but do we do a lot? Mm. We wow. know a lot, but do we do a lot? See, it's not, see, you can, you can, you can know a little bit, but if you do a lot, what you do know will make a big difference. I'll say it to you yes, again. That's good. That's good. You can know a little bit, but if you move on the little bit that you know, that's a lot. That's a lot. Because you have a whole lot of people that are ever learning, Derek, but they never come to the knowledge of the truth. So they learn this week. They go to this Bible study. They got this study. They, they got all the CLC books. <laughs> they got every one of them. All of How them. to pray down come heaven. On, How to on, do this. On. Two steps to this and three steps to healing and five steps to deliverance. But when you go. Woo. Ah, Sebe. The growing is in the going. Yeah. The growing but is in the going. you go. You up in a weird space. It's a weird space. In that weird space now, he say, now I'm going to show you what doors to go to. And he Remember, does. nobody's out. Mm -hmm. Elder Joanne, nobody's out. It's 12 o'clock, nobody's there. And he's saying, now I'm going to show you. Now we got Bibles. Mm -hmm. He said, put that right there. So she would go up to a door, put that there. All right. Go to this one. Put the children's books right there. So we saw bikes. Put the children's books right there. Come on, let's go back here to this, this, this little thoroughfare right here. And put that right there. Praying all along. All along. Then we saw Rashida. We'll call her Rashida. <laughs> now, now, we want to protect their names. I want to say the names, but she told me some other stuff. <laughs> But go ahead. Tell them what happened when we saw Rashida. So we, we saw a car actually drive by. And you, I, just, I need you to understand in the, in the hearing of the story that you have this woman. She's watching you. She's asking you why you're there. Did you get permission? Telling you it's dangerous. Telling you why it's dangerous. Yes. Which could have been scary. But yes. I just happen to be a person who has no fear when it comes to these things. And I pray that boldness come on all come of you. Come, come on. on all of you. Come on all of you. Amen. Because I've been here before. Amen. I've been in scarier housing developments than that before where you really didn't know if you were going to get out once you got in. Because it was a metal revolver that you walked through. But I knew that if God sent me me. And if he was with me, that no weapon in hell was going to prosper yes. against me. And so as we continue to walk, I knew my, I was my, walking my. in the prayers of the intercessors. I knew I was walking in the prayers of Sister Lola and, and Sister Maydee who had been there. And so we saw a car go by. And I just want you to understand, we're praying all along because you have to be praying all along. All along. You, you have to already have been prayed up, but you have to be praying all along while you're there. We prayed. We, we rode the, the area and then I was saying, Lord, where do we set up? Lord, where do we set up? Right there. Thankfully, I have a husband who doesn't just think that I'm a little, you know. Yeah, I go off with my No, 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 no. Let me, let me but just, he does go let with me. Just me. Talk this. about that, so, honey. So, so, I, so, I learn, so I learn to go with it. Yeah. So people say, well, how do you and your wife have this relationship? I trust the spirit of God in her. Amen. 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 I trust the spirit of God in her. So, so it's not this, oh my God, I can't believe she's having me do this now. So, so. Thank God. Watch this. Because, because I have benefited. I'm talking about in a lot of ways. I've benefited from Thank you, Jesus. being with a woman who senses. So, 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 so this is where men have to learn. Women sometimes can feel it faster than men. Well, woman to tell you, I, I already knew that. I was waiting for you to catch up to what I already knew. And a wise woman would say, well, I ain't wasn't saying nothing. I'm, I'm glad you did step in with the kids. I'm glad you did pick this up. And so I just have learned to lean in to that thing. See, I, now, 
when you grow up with certain types of mothers, mm. I remember interviewing for a job, I was 15 years old. They push you into an interview. Go ahead over there, boy, and talk. And you wind up stumbling in front of, hey, 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 my name is Omar Barlow. But, those, but the women pushed you. God, y'all ain't hearing me. You See, you can have some people that, they're not playing with you, they push you into where you need to be. Forced into glory. Yeah, yeah, you didn't want, you, you might not have wanted to do it, but you got pushed in. Anybody ever been pushed in a pool before? <laughs> And you had to learn how to swim. Y'all, y'all, y'all didn't grow up Philadelphia Department of Recreation. Y'all, y'all ain't had that. Y'all had the suburban thing where you have to what? Uh, sign up to go to the pool. You ain't been to the pools with people from the neighborhood. That's how we grew up. Go ahead. I digress. No, no, that that was one time. Yes. And I'll say that we have benefited. Yes. Amen. Joshua, Grace, Nathaniel, and I, from your being willing to trust the spirit of God in me. Amen. And the reason that he's able to do that is because from day one, four, five, six o'clock in the morning, praying, reading all the time, because what you see is what you get. And so that's what allows the the synergy. That's what allows it to work. And I used to, and I used to ask, I used to ask myself, God, what else does this woman want? No, 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 seriously. I used to ask, God, I'm doing everything and she's saying something else that she needs. And he said, she's not wrong. And so I, the, the beauty of having God in between your relationship is it's, it's a higher order that keeps you accountable. Do you realize that messing with your woman has shut down your prayer life? I, I'm, listen, you mistreat your woman, got to shut your prayer life down. That's how, that's how, that's how serious this relationship is. Now watch this. So I said, God, I, I remember her telling me, and, and I feel like you need to hear this. I remember her telling me, I believe that you love me but I need you to work on your care for me. God, I was, I was, I was hurt. Like, what you mean, care? And typical, typical men be like, care, I'm working. <laughs> I need you to, to care. Pastor Branco, help me. I'm in a box right now. And so, care. I'm, so, so she said, I would like to see you Plan some things. Wow. So I started, I went back to God. He said, she's right. He said, and then he told me, he said, care for, he said, love for a woman means you anticipate her needs. God. So what does that mean? I want you to start thinking about what she might ask for. So, so you screaming already. Watch this. Aren't you the bride of Christ? Somebody over there already got the revelation, but I can't look over there. <laughs> Aren't you the bride of Christ? What does that mean? He already anticipates. God what you need before you even ask. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Don't you understand where he got the scripture? My God shall supply all of your needs. Watch this. Then when you get closer, when you get closer in the relationship, he'll give you what you want. God. (laughs) See, 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 not only do we serve a God who gives you what you need, But here's where we miss, where we throw away the blank check that he gives us. Mm. He gives us what we desire. See, you can't live your life saying, I don't want anything. You crazy. 
No, you're crazy. I don't want anything. Get, 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 get out of here with that religious talk. That's religious talk. Oh, I don't want anything. I just want to do the will of God. No, no. There was, he tells you, ask me anything. Ha. Thank you, Jesus. I digress. Go ahead. You, didn't, you did not digress. That's by the spirit. Amen. I know this. You like people, how we switch it today? Making sure we hit that side. I can feel. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, Superwoman. Go ahead. I can feel oh. that that word was needed in the house. Can yes. you feel that? Yes. So it doesn't matter all the time what you planned in your notes. When, when God says go in a different direction, you got to go in a different Hell direction. Yeah. And so I didn't forget. Yes, go ahead. So we're prayerfully figuring out how to get through Abbotsford, right? And we see a car go by. The strategy God gave set up here. Yep. Okay, the woman comes out. Okay, Lord, what's that about? Not sure what, what Sister Sarah is about, but we're going to keep moving. What yes. else do you want us to do? Grab some books. She's warning us. Be careful. Be careful. Be careful. It's dangerous. Okay. I cast off the spirit of fear, but I move with wisdom, right? I'm moving with wisdom. And we, the Holy Spirit says, grab some books. Grab children's books, the Holy Spirit said. Where you see toys, where you see indications that children live yes. there, place the books. Yes. Where you see an opportunity to pray for somebody, pray. So we're doing that. Yes. My husband explained that. Then a car drives by. I see this, a glimpse of a person in a car. Holy Spirit says, follow the car. Ask her what she needs. Prayer for. So I'm going to be honest. Uh, my brother, my, my brother Jamal was a little bit like, mm, I don't know about this, but he was with us Yes. And, and my husband was with us. So we go and of course I'm carefully approaching because you don't want to scare people. And I have a children's book. I'm waving the book from quite a distance as the, as the young lady gets out. And they're in my, my brother and my husband are, they're behind me, yeah. you know, they visible, but a little bit behind me. And so she, I recognize that she sees me and she's not threatened. So I go a little closer and I'm telling her, I have children's books. Do you have children? I already knew she had children because I saw the car seats in the car when Holy Spirit told me to follow her. So um, I forgot what you named the sister, but... Rashida. Rashida. So Sister Rashida said, come, come. Yes, I have children. Bring the books. So we, we take the books up to her. And I, I give her the books. I had a bunch of them. She, took, she takes them. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I said, how can we pray for you today? And she looked a little shocked. She said, I need prayer about. No, no she said, I don't. She said something not about not believing in God. Well, yeah, not, yeah, yeah, she did. Yeah. She did. She said, I don't, I don't really believe in God. I said, that's okay. But what do you need prayer for? Yeah. Right? Because I'm here to pray. Mm-hmm. And I believe in God, so you're going to use my belief, and we're going to pray, because I know that you need prayer, because God go. sent me over here to follow your car. Yes. So I'm unthwarted by yes. anything that you say, because I already heard from yeah. God. So then she says, I don't really believe in, she said, I believe in God, but I don't really follow a certain faith. And I said, that's okay, because we come in the name of Jesus. Right? The name Amen. above all names. So whatever God you follow, we believe in Jesus, but what do you need? She said, I'm, my, my housing is unstable. Mm. I need God to stabilize my housing situation for me and my daughter. I said, that's, that's good. I said, do you mind if we pray for you? So we began to pray, and she bowed her head. We did not ask her to do this. Jesus. She bowed her head and closed her eyes the entire time. We pray with our eyes open when we're witnessing in the street, right? Sometimes we pray with our eyes open when we're praying in the church, too. <laughs> because we literally need to watch and pray. And so we begin yes. to pray for her. Yes. And just how the Holy Spirit came in that moment on that street. And then we saw doors start to open. Yeah. I think I shared this with you before when I talked about no, the experience but, but, but in New Jersey. Say this. My, my brother, who was a initially apprehensive he started praying he jumped in with such a compassionate Beautiful prayer, prayer for her that's right that it was incredible yes he did and that is what we're talking about yes. that the growing is in the going yeah and so as repeat i was praying meaning, she's right meaning. here as i'm praying jamal's here and omar's here and i hear this prayer bubbling up out of my <laughs> brother so i said pray go ahead and pray yeah yeah. You know, go, go forward with it. And he did. And she received it. And we let her know where we were from and how she could get more help. And her, her mom you opened gotta the let door. Me tell me, you got to let me tell that part. Go tell that part. So her mom opens the door and she said, y'all from the Salvation Army? <laughs> <laughs> we did not have 
the prayer vest on. Uh, we didn't uh, have red shirts on. As a matter <laughs> of fact, none of us had anything red or white on. Yes. And she just yelled. She said, what she say again? y'all from the Salvation Army. And so. And I said, yeah, we are from the army of those <laughs> who come to let you know Amen. the story of salvation. Amen. But then when we walked, Jose, get this. Then when we walked back to where the prayer station was set up, Miss Sarah was out at the prayer station. She had gone to get her coat and, and now and she was on the phone. And now a person that was in, a person that was initially resistant. Yeah. She was inspired by the Holy Ghost. She started knocking on doors. Come on out here for prayer. She was like this. Oh uh, y'all, y'all you ain't trying. Y'all ain't hearing me. You y'all ain't this. hearing me. Come on y'all out here, these people. Come on out here. You. you know you sick. Come on out here for prayer. Go on over there to Miss Virgie. She, she went said and she got was him. in pain today. She went and got him. And so she went down to these two guys that looked like they were trying to walk away real quick. So they were like, no, nah, no, nah, what's up, y'all? We good, we good. And so I, I'm like, man, I don't have, at, at this point, I was like, man, I don't have any faith for them, being honest with you. So Gerald Rice, he pulls up and he was like, oh, let's go down there. See, that's why we need each other. Y- y'all ain't hearing me. That's right. That's why we need each other. So Gerald Rice, he pulls up. He got his Sixers jersey on. He got his hat to the back. He's doing his thing, right? So he pulls up. He's like, oh, let's go down there. So we go down there, witness to these guys, and Gerald start sharing the faith. Bah, bah, bah. Cause they said, man, we're not down with that religious stuff. We don't, we don't have, we don't believe in religion. We're like, that's okay. So remember when you're out witnessing, people will always give you something back to repel you. I don't believe in God. He doesn't work. None of this, this is nonsense. And so you have to say, that's okay. That's okay. Can you listen to me just for a minute? So Gerald starts sharing. Then the Holy Ghost comes upon me. Now we're up the hill praying for them. while We're watching them and Amen. praying for them, Sister Janice and I. So I, I start to share. And I said, how in the world do you think we got here if God didn't want you? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How did you get to us if God didn't want you? 1230 on a Saturday in Abbotsford Homes, And we're right here talking to you. So I pulled out the wordless book. I said, you mind if I go through this with you? So I said, here's the blackness of sin. This is where we missed the mark. Showed him the black page. Then I showed him the blood page. I said, Jesus has forgiven you of all your sins. He totally wipes your slate clean. They're listening. One guy starts crying. Third page. I said, he makes you the righteousness of God. I said, do you understand that? He said, I understand that. Then we get to the last page where I said, he he brings you into green pastures. He wipes your slate clean and then he says, go. Then he says, I'm going to show you your life now. Mm -hmm. Now watch this. The guy who was next to the guy who started welling up, he was kind of rushing him a little bit like, you know, I got to go. We got to go. But I'm telling you this. I said, and I asked him the question. I said, would you like to receive Christ as your savior? He said, I understand what you're saying. He said, not today. Watch this, but here's what I want you to know. I said, would you mind if I pray for you anyway? I said, if there's any moment that you want to accept him, just remember this prayer. And you can actually say this prayer. Said the prayer, boom, boom, boom. Here's the part that I want all of us to understand. You don't have to close the deal. God. Yeah. You, see, see, as long as you think that I close the deal, you walk away rejected, dejected, depressed, doubting, and thinking it doesn't work. It was working. God. Did it work on you? And here's the thing. Yes. Even if he had received yes. Christ, you still didn't close the deal. Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, Jeez. That's why I married her. It's not us. My God. 
It's not us. So you don't leave feeling defeated. If yes. they reject at that moment, they reject Christ. If yes. they receive, they receive Christ. We are but vessels. But Janine, but, but Janine, here's the part that I also want to add. I had the witness in my spirit that they received it. Mm -hmm. I, I'm telling you, when you're in this space, it's a witness in your spirit. It's not necessarily about words. It's about what you picked up. Yeah. And I could, I could sense in my spirit that it was penetrating him. I mean, these were guys that were initially in a rush, but they waited. Right. They waited. And I said, because they'll, then they throw this out. Well, some of my family's Islamic. I said, it's okay. The Quran talks about Jesus. Then it, then, it, then it automatically deals with their objection, and then we can go right back to the point. And so you have to uh, move in such boldness where you're not afraid, watch this, you're not afraid of, of, of moving in what God would have you to do. Now watch this. I literally, when I talked to my brother afterwards, I said, how do you feel, man? He said, oh, I feel great. I said, I bet you that the things that you were worrying about before, they have less hold on you, don't they? That's good. He said, they do. Here, oh God, this blessed me. Thank you, Lord. That morning, one of our members, God, this is where we gotta be with one another. One of our members from this church, he was in the training. And less than one month, Pastor Bob, we've trained over 100 people in one month. New Covenant folks for prayer station training, 100 people. Come on, it, whole church is about to change. One of our members, he said, man, I was addicted to crack. He said this yesterday. He said, but this lady witnessed to me, God. And when I finally decided to give my life to Christ, guess whose voice I heard? That one lady. That one lady. That one lady. And this person is serving on everything at the church. Don't discount what God can do. And he was willing and free enough yeah. to share. This is where I was, but I'm witnessing and validating the claim yeah. of what God has done. So when we're witnessing to people, what we're doing is we're validating the claim. What do he do for you? Is he a way maker? <laughs> is he the resurrection and the life? Don't wait for Easter. <laughs> Don't wait for Palm Sunday. <laughs> Don't wait to put a brand new suit on. But he's saying that I'm the resurrection in the life always in your life. And let me just share this last thing, meaning. After all of this, we gathered at the Kairos room for a debriefing. It's about time I'm for just, you to go this way I'm a little just, bit. We tag team partners like Switch. That's how we, look, we, sometimes we got to play zone with our children though. Because <laughs> it's three or two, so we got to do zone. <laughs> so about 30 of us gathered at the Kairos room to debrief outside in the parking lot. And this guy, I'm still overwhelmed. This guy pulls up. His name was Vegas. I'll let Janine tell this that one. That was his real is, name, y'all. This, this is deep. This is deep. Go ahead, Nene. Tell this so, one. So I'm, I'm going to insert a little commercial here. If you want this experience, you need to go online mm -hmm. and sign up for the training next, Sunday, next Saturday, right? I hear you, I hear you, Sister Sample. She's on fire. She met us there. She's been trained so many times. She said, I'm going to just meet y'all there. <laughs> Sign up for next Saturday. It's the last time you get to get trained in yeah. March. Yeah. And we'll make sure that you get the training and get to go out with us. You'll come back with your own stories. So we went to Abbotsford Homes. A team went to Abbotsford Homes. Team A went team to went to ShopRite. A team went to the, the farmer's, farmer's market. market. We 
concluded at the Kairos room because that's where we're having the gathering next week. So all of us are there at the Kairos room just taking up the parking, parking lot, right? About 30, 35 of us are YWAM brothers and sisters as well as those who came out from New Covenant. And we're sharing stories. We'll put the videos up so you can see them or just go online and you can see the videos of people's testimonies. People who said, I was scared, but I did it. This is what happened for this person. This is what happened for that person. It was powerful. So I feel this person behind us kind of looking at us, but they're moving in and out of their car, about three people, a, a, a wife, a husband, and a child, moving in and out of the car back. They passed us more than one time. And the Holy Spirit said, I don't know how God talked to y'all, but this is how he talked to me. You know, it's very plain. You better not be standing here with all these people. And you've been out to three locations, and you don't ask that man what he needs prayer for. Mm. And I'm going to be honest. I was like, man, I'm a little tired. <laughs> it's been a lot. <laughs> you know, but, but I said, okay, yes, Lord. You know, obedience is better than sacrifice. So he came back by, behind us. Our backs are all to him, but his, his car is behind us. A tall man, big man, bald, tattoos and piercings everywhere. Kind of like the brother we saw in the smoke room we told you about at the airport last week. And we were like, what in the world? And then he sat right between us on the plane and we witnessed to him. It was that kind of experience. So we, I turned around and I said, excuse me, sir, how can we pray for you today? So he's looking at me and all these people and he says, I serve eight gods and the God of, I'm not even going to celebrate the name, but he said a name. He said, I serve all these gods and I used to be a Christian, but I'm not anymore. He said, but what I feel right here, he said, what I feel just with all of you right here, he said, I've never felt it. I never felt it before. And yes, you can pray for me. Yep. Mm. And we said, sir, <laughs> what you feel mm. is the love of God. Yep. The love of God. Oh God. The love of God. It does what? Mm. It covers. Mm. It covers. Mm. It covers. It's a witness. It too. is a witness. It's a witness. Just our presence there was a witness. And so he humbled himself, this big man, and bowed his head and allowed us to pray for him. And it was so powerful because we had been out praying in different sections of East Falls for Everybody. other people. And we told him, you got all of us? God must be coming back for you. You got the whole prayer yeah. team? I'm talking about brothers Sir, and sisters from, from Brazil, Brazil, brothers and sisters from Colombia, yes. brothers and sisters from Mount Airy, brothers from and North sisters Philly. from North Philly, <laughs> brothers and sisters from all over the world, literally him. standing there praying for Vegas. And what we're trying to communicate to you is that we couldn't have planned it. God That's had how already you know planned it's his it. Doing. God had already he planned already it. Already did it. Nothing is a surprise to him. Mm. And so, as we move by the Spirit, as you move by the Spirit, Jesus. as you go in spite of fear, as My you go God, in spite of thinking that you don't know enough scriptures, as you go, mm. as you heard my cousin Derek say to these different locations where we're going to be the ones who's helping people get jobs, where we're going to be the ones mm. telling that young man or young woman mm. they can put down the gun, they can pick up their purpose and find a job that relates to it. We're the ones yes. going into the marketplace. Yes. It has to be be you. Mm. It has to be you. It has to be you. It's Nina in her boutique when people come in. Yes. How may I pray for you? Mm. It's Mom Barlow. That's what she did at the B yeah. stop. It was a prayer house. Yeah. People were coming into her business buying yep. buying wares, but there, it was a prayer station. Mm. Wherever you are That's right. That's today, right. wherever you are My tomorrow, God. wherever you are, yeah. be there intentionally with the power yes. and the presence of the mm. Holy Ghost. And there you will change yes. somebody's life. Yes. You will be used to change somebody's life. And what happens as you go mm. and grow in obedience? Guess what happens? You give blessing but you get so much more yeah. than you have given. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you, you, you start to move to the center of his heart. That's good. 
See, you can be doing a lot of stuff but not be in his heart. But you start to move to the very center of his heart. That's why Epaphras prayed. Can you put this up? Colossians 4, I think it's either 4.12 or 4.13. This was a prayer that Epaphras, um, he prayed. It's Colossians 4, verse 12. He said, I pray that you would stand. Yeah, they're getting it now. Colossians 4, verse 12. But you're moving into the center of his will, and you no longer have to live with this idea. I don't know God's purpose for my life. That's a trick of the devil. I don't know God's purpose for my life. I don't know what he wants to do with my life. Well, let me, here's how the great time managers tell people how to manage themselves. Put the big rocks in first. So imagine a jar and you say, and you have all these big rocks and you have all these little rocks. If you put the little things in first, you don't have any room for the big rocks. But if you put the big rocks in first, not only can you put the little rocks in, but you might not even want to do any of that stuff anymore yeah. if you put the big rocks in. The big rock is that it is his desire that none would perish. That's his heart's desire. And so we are here as ministers of reconciliation. In other words, we are partnering with God to help people be reconciled to God. That's why he says it's the great commission. In other words, we all are part of a corporate mission. I don't care if you work for corporate America, if you are a doctor, if you are a teacher, if you are an attorney, God flatlines everybody. That's right. He flatlines everybody. He said, everyone that is one of my sons and daughters, they will be part of my co-mission, corporate mission. In other words, we all have this in common, Janine. Yeah. What do we have in common? To win the world for him. Yeah. To advance his kingdom. We have that all in common. That, and watch this. And when we do it, our peace is connected to it. Mm, that's good. Our joy is connected to it. That's why he says the kingdom of God is like one who had a pearl in a field. God, watch this. It's a pearl in the field. And it says, when the man found the treasure in the field, he, watch this, he sold everything he had. Now, here's the question that you got to ask. How valuable is the kingdom of God? That when I find just one treasure, he said one, mm. that I sold everything that I had, watch this, and bought the whole field. Watch this. So the thing that you find, God is always, he's progressive. What, what do I mean by progressive? Keisha, once he shows you one thing, he'll say, daughter, there's more than that. Yeah. God, y'all yeah, ain't yeah, hearing yeah, me. Yeah. That's why he had to buy the whole field. He said, why would you settle right here and park? Some people get one revelation and park. Jesus saves and you park right there. I, you got me to church and I park right there for 25 years. I join the choir and I park right there. I'm a deacon and I park right there. Woo! There's nothing else. I park right there. God is saying, jump with you. He's using us to jumpstart your car. Yeah, get out of those parking spots. Get out of that parking spot. Trash that car. We coming through with the tow trucks. Yep. We coming through with the tow Ooh. trucks. Whatever you were doing, you may not be able to do it anymore. Maybe you shouldn't be doing it anymore. But we know one thing. This thing needs to be added to it. Yes. This thing needs to be added. This thing My. needs to be added to it. You need to know how to go out. You yes. need to know what to say to your neighbor. You need to know what to say to your coworker. You need to know what to say next to the lady yes. that's getting her nails done next to you at yep. the salon. Mm -hmm. You cannot be quiet and it, and it anymore. And Janine, it shouldn't be a thing Well, that's just for them. No. That's for them, that's for you. And watch this, it is not until he postures you or changes your position that he releases the other stuff. So when God knows, somebody say God knows. When he knows that you'll obey, he'll say now I'll release the contract. Watch this, now watch this. Here's the point that I want you to understand. 
everybody has to yield to the Great Commission. Now, in addition to that, watch this. He says, occupy until I come. Some folks were, were told, well, God's coming in two weeks, so I don't have to do nothing. No, 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 no. no. He says, do business until I come. You got to be a trader. What does that mean? T-R-A-D-E-R. -E watch this. What this means is this. He wants you to max out on the Great Commission. He wants you to max out on your relationships. He wants you to max out with your children. He wants you to max out on the business that you're running. He want, if you write books, max out writing books. If you do counseling, max out counseling. If you do football, max out counseling. God is not intimidated by anything that he told you to do. You do study, it never stops. I dare you to max out on it. Yeah. You a teacher, max out. That's what it means to occupy until I come. In addition, Janine, to the Great Commission, he's saying max out on your love life. Max out with your children. Max out. He's saying max out in your neighborhood. Stop sitting still. Well, I'm waiting for somebody to call me. You've already been called. I'm waiting for somebody to anoint me. You've already been anointed. I'm waiting for somebody to tell me how great I am. He already said you're great. Stop waiting for somebody to confirm because it may never happen. Stop waiting for somebody to tell you how good you are. Stop waiting. You'll waste your whole life. Watch this. Some of y'all in the fourth quarter of your life and you still scared? That means you might have 10 years left and then you still scared. You still thinking about what people think. Who cares? Who cares? If you came into a reality of how God really thinks about you, you wouldn't want to be anybody but yourself. That's good. Woo. If you came into the reality of how God really thinks about yeah, you, yeah, yeah. you will fight hard to be yourself. That's good. Everybody else is taken. Everybody be else is taken. Yourself. Everybody Why? else because is taken. Because everybody else is taken. Be yourself. Here it is. Go ahead. Let me give it to you in Matthew 9. Amen. Write this down so when you go study today, you know we didn't just tell you stories today. Matthew 9. Matthew 9. Verse 31, but they, when they were departed, spread about, spread abroad mm. his fame in all that country. We're going to mm. go about, we're going to make Jesus's name famous, famous, famous. My God. Verse 32, as they went out, as they did what? As, oh, y'all tired now. <laughs> Come on. Verse 32, as they went out, mm. behold, they brought to him a dumb man possessed with the devil. And when the devil was cast out, the dumb spoke, spake, mm. and the multitudes marveled, saying, it was never so seen in Israel. Thank so you, these Father. things are happening as they will continue to happen as we go out. The stories, the, the, the Miss, uh, Miss, what we call her, Miss Smith and Ro Ro Rochelle and Sarah. all these different people. Miss Sarah. I don't know what we didn't call the people now, so we didn't call See, them so many things. No, Rashida, Rashida Sarah. I got the Sarah. Sarah. Right. He got all the made up names. Okay, we got it. But the Pharisee said he casteth out devils through the prince of devils. And mm. Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom. What Stop did he right preach? There. Stop right there, Neem. Stop right there. He went about, underline this in your Bible, even rip it out. He went about in the cities. There it is. Preaching the kingdom. Now watch this. The city is waiting for the kingdom. That's all I want to drop me. No, that's it. The city needs the kingdom. Pastor Bracco, take this back to Africa. The city and the village needs the kingdom. They don't need religion, but the city needs North Philly, Germantown, West Oak Lane, they, Mount Airy. They need the kingdom. He went to the cities releasing the governing authority of a king. The cities and the villages. Jesus. So you're not off the hook if you're in the suburbs. <laughs> teaching in the synagogues. You, you, gotta, you gotta get the teaching in the house too, right? Yes. So it's in the cities and the villages. Mm. It's in the synagogues. In the place of worship, yes. It's in the place of worship and preaching the gospel 
What gospel are you preaching? What gospel are you preaching? If it's not the gospel of the kingdom, don't preach it no more. And healing every sickness and every disease among the people, the people are sick. They're diseased. That's why you got to be prayed up and ready when you go to them. Verse 36, but when he saw the multitudes, and this is why going out is important too, and this is why being in your prayer closet is important too. What happened? It said he was moved with what? Compassion. Some of us don't have enough compassion. That's why you can stay parked. Mm. You can stay parked when you don't care enough. Yeah. When you don't go out, you, you, you can't care enough because you don't see it. You yeah. don't feel it. It's not up on you. Yeah. Right? That people are living this way. Yeah. That people don't know the, the, that God loves them and that yeah. their life can be different. And this is not about status, right? Because yeah. there's some people that look like they have everything materially have and they have nothing. They, they want to take nothing. their lives. Their families are ripped apart. So this is to the least and to whom we see as the greatest. And sometimes those are flipped in reality. This is for everyone. Yes. It says, but when he saw the multitudes, verse mm. 36, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad and sheep having no shepherd. They had no leadership. Wandering. No leadership. Mm. Nobody to care no for direction. them. No direction. Verse 37. Mm. Then saith he unto his disciples. Wow. And this is what we say to you today. Thank the you. harvest truly is plenteous. but the laborers are few. Here's how you pray. Mm. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest mm. that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. And so we're going to pray that today and you're gonna pray it for yourself. And we don't wanna lose that scripture because I know that that was meant to be shared as well. Yeah. We wanna pray this scripture, Colossians 4, 12 over you as well. Amen. Epaphras, who is one of you, a servant of Christ, saluteth you, always laboring fervently for you yes. in prayers. That what? That you, that all of you may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. In all the will of God. Yes. That's the prayer. That's the prayer. That's the prayer for the week. We'll be praying and fasting this week as we prepare for the gathering. We invite you to pray and fast with us. The prayer line, the people will let you know on Thursday morning and Thursday night. Uh, there are other prayers throughout the week. The, the prayer line is open. But this is a, a consecrated week as we believe God for what yeah. he's going to do in the yeah, gathering yeah, 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 on yeah, Saturday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As we believe God on yeah, Sunday. Yeah. As we believe God for what yeah, he's going to yeah, do yeah, 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 yeah. in the neighborhood yeah. as we get trained and go out again yeah. on Saturday. And miracles happen when we gather. Miracles happen when we gather. Amen. 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 Let's, let's pray for everybody first and okay. then we'll make the call. Father, we thank you. You can stand with us if you will. Father, we thank you for these, your people. We thank you for this time, release, God. Release we thank you for this time, God. Yeah. We thank you for this time, yeah. Lord, yeah. to just be in your presence. Yeah. A time yeah. when we could just yeah. settle ourselves. Enjoy one another's company. Sit in your presence and hear from you. We thank you for your word, Lord, that is exhorting us to go into the cities and into the villages. We thank you for your word that's exhorting us to teach in the, in the places of worship, God. We thank you for your word that's exhorting us, God, to preach the gospel of the kingdom of God. We thank you for your word, Lord, that lets us know that when we go, we will heal every sickness and every disease among the people. We thank you, God, for your word that tells us, Lord, that when we see the multitudes, that we are coming with the yes. solutions that they need in the name of Jesus. And so, Father, we pray, God, understanding that we don't have a harvest problem mm. because you said that the harvest is plenteous. Mm. But you said, Lord, we have a little challenge with the laborers. And so, God, we pray in the name of Jesus 
not even asking you God but decreeing and declaring God according to your word that we are the laborers that you've been looking for God we thank you that we are the laborers that you've been looking for we thank you God that when you look about the earth that you will not be able to say that the laborers were few at New Covenant Church of Philadelphia that you will not be able to say the laborers were few at YWAM that you will not be able to say the laborers were few at the churches of Philadelphia God because as we seek to address these issues of violence and as we seek to address these issues of 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 of, of a joblessness God and as we seek to address these issues of, of broken relationships and poverty and and fatherlessness and and motherlessness God and and children in schools who have not even a sense for what manners are we thank you that we're there God we're sent we're sent to heal them we're sent to be a solution we are not those God who will be the ones who are few and laborers in the name of Jesus we thank you God can you pray the perfect and complete prayer yes. over everybody yeah thank you Jesus. we're gonna release a prayer that we, that every last one of us will step completely into the will of God and so father as your sons and daughters are here this morning we pray that each one, starting with our Pastor Bob and Lady Denise, we pray that each one of us, oh God, will stand perfect and complete in all of your will. We pray and we break every distraction. We break everything that uh, takes away our focus from you in the name of Jesus. But we pray that we would stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. We yield to it. Come on. We yield to it in the name of Jesus. We surrender. I stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. We break every limitation. We break every snare. The snare is broken in the name of Jesus. Come on. We break every snare. We break every trap. But Father, we yield. We yield to the Spirit of God. We yield. We yield to your will. We surrender to your will in the name of Jesus. Thank ah, you, thank you, Perfect. Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Lord. And somebody say you, amen, Jesus. amen, and amen. Hallelujah. If there's somebody here today that would like to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, he forgives you not for some sin, but for all sin. And once he forgives you, you become the righteousness of God. And so if there's anybody online who's saying, I want to receive Jesus as my personal savior and my, the Lord of my life. You can text to that number if you're making a decision online, but if there's anybody in the house today that would like to accept the Christ as their savior, we welcome you this morning. Is there anyone here this morning? Amen. Thank you guys. Give God some praise. Hallelujah. your one-stop shop for getting connected and staying connected here with us at New Covenant. Today's lesson is getting started. If you have not downloaded the Church Center app, this tutorial will walk you through Church Center app. This tutorial will walk you through Welcome to Church Center 101, your one-stop shop for getting connected and staying connected here with us at New Covenant. Today's lesson is getting started. If you have not downloaded the Church Center app, welcome to Church Center 101, your one-stop shop for getting connected and staying connected here with us at New Covenant. Today's lesson is getting started. If you have not downloaded the Church Center app, this tutorial will walk you through how to set up the app on your phone. And don't worry, if you miss a step, simply head over to our YouTube channel to view this video at any time. And you can stop and pause the video at your leisure. All right, class is now in session. 
Your first step is to go to either the Google Play Store for Android devices or the App Store for Apple devices. Search for the Church Center app and download the app onto your phone. Once downloaded, open the app and you will be prompted to get started. Use your location to find New Covenant Church or use the search bar to search for us. Click on the NCC logo and select, this is my church. Then you'll be prompted to add in your mobile number or your email. This will be how you log in. A six digit code will be texted or emailed to you. Enter that code and click next. Be sure that the name on the screen matches your name, then click log in. At this point, you can choose to enable face ID or your fingerprint sensor to log in. This will keep your private information safe and secure on your phone. And just like that, you're in. You are now connected with the Church Center app. Did you miss a step? It's okay. This video will remain available on our YouTube page so that you can follow these steps at any time and at any pace. All right, class, that's all I have for you today. I'll see you next week. Welcome to Church Center 101, your one-stop shop for getting connected and staying connected here with us at New Covenant. Today's lesson is getting started. If you have not downloaded the Church Center app, this tutorial will walk you through how to set up the app on your phone. And don't worry, if you miss a step, simply head over to our YouTube channel to view this video at any time. And you can stop and pause the video at your leisure. All right, class is now in session. Your first step is to go to either the Google Play Store for Android devices or the App Store for Apple devices. Search for the Church Center app and download the app onto your phone. Once downloaded, open the app and you will be prompted to get started. Use your location to find New Covenant Church or use the search bar to search for us. Click on the NCC logo and select, this is my church. Then you'll be prompted to add in your mobile number or your email. This will be how you log in. A six digit code will be texted or emailed to you. Enter that code and click next. Be sure that the name on the screen matches your name, then click log in. At this point, you can choose to enable face ID or your fingerprint sensor to log in. This will keep your private information safe and secure on your phone. And just like that, you're in. You are now connected with the Church Center app. Did you miss a step? It's okay. This video will remain available on our YouTube page so that you can follow these steps at any time and at any pace. All right, class. That's all I have for you today. I'll see you next week. Hey, my name is Gabrielle, and this is your Covenant Connection. Are you connected? Get connected and stay connected with the Covenant Connection. is coming. Make sure you grab an invite card on your way to share with someone this week. For a full listing of service times, you can visit nccop.church/easter. The gathering is coming your way on Sunday, March the 26th at 3 p.m. Head on over to nccop.church/gtp to go ahead on and register and make sure you register those that you're inviting with you as well. Are you interested in volunteering for this event? 
The registration form is on our website as well at mtclp.church slash gtp. Let's get together, Philly. Thank you to all who have donated to the media campaign thus far. We are still accepting donations. Your donation helps advance the mission and vision of the church as we touch the lives of viewers across the city of Philadelphia and beyond. Visit mccop.church slash media team to donate or select media when using your preferred online giving method. Thank you for tuning in to the Outpouring Worship Experience here at the New Covenant Church of Philadelphia. For a full listing of events and activities that you can participate in, visit nccop.church slash events. Let's take a moment to give our tithes and offerings. Here are the ways that you can give. You can text to give, give through Givelify, through our secure website, or through the mail to 7500 Germantown Avenue, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, 19119. As you've been faithful in tithes and in offerings, I'm asking you as often as you have discretion and you are led by the Spirit to give to the capital campaign so that we might be found faithful stewards of the grace of God and the upkeep of this campus so that generations to come will rise up and call us blessed. God bless you. God keep you as you give to CC21. We pray that God will bless every gift and every giver. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, my name is Deborah.